Uh, all right, let's uh, begin. There are some questions in the chat here, so I will address those questions. And I think the audio is fixed, so if there are any other uh, questions, you may ask as well. So, um, uh, Nidel, I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, is asking, what is the difference between the gift of faith and the spirit of faith? Okay, so the gift of faith and the spirit of faith. Uh, the gift of faith is uh, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We read about the gift of faith in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, it is the faith that God, unusual faith, which God puts in our heart, given moment to, to um, release God's power. For example, when there was a lame man who was sitting in the gate beautiful, right? Acts chapter 3, you find that uh, Peter and John, they went and they ministered to that lame man. And they said something like, you know, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we uh, give to you uh, in, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So it's amazing. It's supernatural. Like how can they even imagine that a person who has not walked for 40 years will walk? But in those moments, God imparted something like the gift of faith. Okay. So the gift of faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit, which God gives to us. Okay. So that is what the gift of faith, our understanding of the gift of faith is. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith can simply be equated to, my understanding is, um, the, the Holy Spirit and his work. Because we see the opposites of the gift of faith, which is, we, we say spirit of faith, which is like spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety. All of those are from the demonic kingdom. But when we say spirit of faith, we are talking about the the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit. So that is how we would distinguish between the gift of faith and the spirit of faith. And I hope that I've answered your question, uh, Nidel. And thank you, Gertrude, for trying to um, answer his question here as well. All right. Now, uh, there's another question that Nidel asks. He says, how do we move from just mentally accepting the word of God in our minds to truly believing it in our hearts. So uh, we've been saying that believing is an action, right? It's an action of the heart. So we would need to engage our heart when it comes to believing. So I would look at it, Nidel, as a process. So first you listen, isn't it? You listen to the word of God. You listen to what is being said. But to really develop faith, uh, I need to listen to it again. I need to meditate on the word of God. I need to internalize it. So when I really want to put my faith, my belief in that word, I have to keep coming back to it again and again and again. So we say things like meditate the word, declare the word, right? Confess the word, speak the, f speak the word, do the word. So what's happening? You are completely applying. You're just taking it into your system. You're taking it into your heart. And then it is beginning to, to work in your life. So to come to a place of believing, you know, is going to take that kind of effort from our side. Because we don't want to just listen. Because listening is easy. You listen and then you forget about it. But believing is when you have heard it and it has gone in the depths of your heart. It's become a part of who you are and the way you think and the things that you do, right? the choices that you make. So that's the difference, Nadel. So you have to go from just mentally accepting what is being spoken to, uh, to sort of, um, what would you say, soaking in or taking in the word of God to believe it in your heart. Okay, coming to Lucy, uh, she says, Sister, we trust in God, hope for good things, claiming God's promises. We believe in the word of God on the positive side. Suddenly, some negative thoughts do come. It might happen so. How we need to overcome 
this part. Okay. So, uh, Sister Lucy, a very honest question. We put our faith in God's word, but then, you know, in our minds, sometimes we struggle with negative thoughts, with um, uh, self-pity. We put ourselves down and we say, you will never, I will never be able to do this. Everyone else is better than me. So these things happen. Right? Why do they happen? There are uh, two major reasons. One is Satan, his job is to tempt us. So he is doing his work, putting thoughts in our minds and telling us, you can't do this, you're not good enough, all of that. So Satan is doing his work. The second reason why we have thoughts like this is because we let our minds wander. We don't discipline our thinking, isn't it? So. It, it is coming, this kind of thinking is coming from our own patterns that we have developed over the years. So we need to deal with it. That's where the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, renew your mind. Change the way you think. Change the patterns. Don't conform to the ways of the world, but be conformed to the things of God. So renewing of the mind will help us to keep such negative thoughts away. And also recognizing what are really my thoughts. What are the thoughts which are external? Satan is trying to tempt me to give up. That will also be very helpful. Then we can reject those thoughts in the name of Jesus. So this is the way in which we can actually assess. Okay, And it's a battle, Sister Lucy. So we are constantly um, striving to maintain the right thinking, to maintain, uh, you know, when you have the right thinking, then you can... Keep that faith in your heart. I hope I have answered your question. Um, and uh, uh, somebody had a question to ask. Okay, thank you. Uh, you wanted to unmute and ask. Uh, I saw a hand raised. So please feel free. You may ask your question. All right. So um, if you would like to ask later, that should be fine. We will proceed with the subject on faith. So, so far we have uh, discussed about faith and tried to understand it from Hebrews chapter 11 uh, and verse 1. Sometimes the term that is used to describe faith is also sixth sense okay what is the sixth sense we all know we uh, make our decisions on the basis of our five senses thank you uh, on the basis of five senses what we can see what we can hear what we can feel what we can taste what we can touch but making decisions on the basis of things that don't exist in the natural like abraham we could have, all of us could have asked him, how can you believe? You're 100 years old. Your five senses will tell you it's impossible. How can you have a generation? You cannot have a generation. It's not logical. This reasoning is false. Because five senses are telling us it's not possible. But how did Abraham believe? Sixth sense. Okay, we're just using the term sixth sense. Go, don't go and tell people, hey, I learned about sixth sense. It's just for our understanding. It's a spiritual sense that we have. Faith. Right? It's the sixth sense that we carry as believers. Where I can't see it. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. I can't smell it. I can't taste it. But it is there. Okay? God is working on it. It will happen on the basis of the sixth sense. So faith is like that sixth sense that we have to keep very sharp and alert within our hearts. So as a believer, you know, maintain uh, the strength and sensitivity of the sixth sense. OK, let's, um, all right. Uh, Nudel, did you want to say something? I can hear you. Sure, that's a question. 
All right. Um, let's uh, move ahead. The next thing is that faith connects us to God. Now, we keep talking about relationship with God, isn't it? We say we must have a strong relationship with God. How to have a strong relationship with God? When we look at the way God has created man, God has created man, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, So we see the body. We are familiar with the body because it's visible to the eyes. But we have a soul. The soul part of us is our personality. It is uh, our mind, our will, and our emotions. So mind is the things that we think about. Will is the kind of decisions that we make. Emotions are the feelings that we feel. So all of us have a soul. And all our souls are, you know, they give us our personality. Some may be very sensitive. Some may be very strong. So we all have our personalities. And God gives us a soul. But in addition to this, we have a core part of us which is known as the spirit. We have the spirit which is Actually, who we are is the spirit. Who we really are is the spirit man. But God has given us a soul as well as a body. The spirit will live on into eternity. So when we talk about our relationship with God, our spirit needs to connect with God's spirit. That is the way we establish that relationship and we continue the journey of our relationship with God. So our relationship with God is actually spirit to spirit. Okay? That is why we worship. That is why we take the word in. Because there are things that are happening uh, based on what God has instructed in his word to our spirit man, to our relationship with God. Because this is spirit to spirit, the kind of relationship that we have with God. Now, because we are relating to God through our spirit, we must also understand that it is faith that actually makes this connection. It is faith that actually makes this, uh, sort of keeps this spirit to spirit connection that we have with God. So when I maintain faith in my heart, uh, I am able to have a stronger relationship with God, I'm able to have a closer walk with God. So imagine, okay, I don't have any faith. I don't have any faith in who God is and what he can do, his nature. But I'm saying, yeah, I have a relationship with God. It's so empty, isn't it? It's so empty because where is the faith? Where is the believing in God and who he is, what he can do in my life, what he can do in the lives of others? So when faith is lacking, there is a lack in the connection that we can experience with God. So that is why you know, we have to keep faith alive because it gives us that strong connect with God. Um, and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So for he who comes to God must believe. So in my relationship with God, I must believe who God is and what God can do. Isn't it? That's what it's saying. And what is the next part of, of that uh, scripture? It says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So God is looking for something. Imagine God is looking from heaven. Okay. Um, a father, a heavenly father is looking down on the earth and uh, he's searching. What do you think he will search for? Who do you think he will search for? He may, sorry. Okay. Uh, he's searching to answer somebody's prayer. Okay, now what will he look for to answer the prayer? Faith. So God looks for faith. We may we may just uh, you know uh, cry to God, or we may uh, just keep asking Him again and again. Uh, we may do everything we know 
to make God answer. But the Bible already gives us the key. It says, what is God moved by? By faith. Isn't it? That's how Jesus uh, did all his works. Wherever he saw faith, he healed. Wherever he saw faith, right? he uh, delivered people. He said things like, great is your faith, uh, according to your faith. So faith is what God is looking for. When he finds faith, right? we see that God's answers come to us. Uh, you may have noticed we've put these posters uh, um, on campus of um, men and women of God. So there is a, there is a uh, poster of Smith Wigglesworth. And uh, he says, I'm not moved by what I see. Okay? I'm only moved by what I believe. So that's the most important thing. Faith in our hearts. What do I believe? And even God is moved by faith. So when he looks down, he's looking. Where is faith? Wherever faith is there, I can do something. When there is no faith, in fact, when you read about Jesus, you see that he went to some towns, he went to some villages to do the ministry. And what does the Bible say? He could not do any miracles because of their unbelief. When there is unbelief, nothing happens. But when there is faith, Hebrews 11, 6, what does it say? And it is impossible uh, to please God without faith. When there is faith, right, it gives us that connect with God. It gives us that relationship with God. Because he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And faith also pleases God. So do we want to please God? Of course, we want to please God. We want to find out, isn't it? What can I do to make God happy? When will God be happy with my life? Uh, answer is given in this scripture. It says, faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. So a life of faith. If I'm carrying faith in my heart towards God, God is happy with me. But if there is unbelief, God is not happy. We know that there were times when Jesus even rebuked, uh, you know, those, those people who came with unbelief. So unbelief displeases God, but faith pleases God. So all the more reason for us to pursue faith and build faith in our hearts. It will help us to connect with God. It will also please God. God or make God happy. Now, faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know if you have come across um, uh, some sermons or content where people say um, like three principles for faith, okay, or uh, four keys to use faith, um, uh, uh, steps. To believe you can you can use this and you can get whatever you want from god right so we do come across some teachings like this uh, however you know while the laws in the bible are real we can apply certain principles and we can see the results for example the bible says give and it will be given to you right uh, good measure pressed down shaken together so that's a principle in the bible what is a principle when you give you will be blessed okay uh, in the same way there are many other principles if you work hard a, a diligent hand will be blessed a diligent hand will not lack so those who work hard you will be blessed these are principles Anyone can apply these principles and they can see the fruit of those principles. But when you look at the law of faith, okay, one important point that we must remember is it is not just a formula. You know, when we learn, oh, this is how faith works. If you do this, if you do that, you can apply faith. You will see the results in your life. Wonderful. It's not just a principle. Faith is connected to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I cannot just use the principle and neglect the 
person. So the principle will apply or the law will apply when I'm connected to the person. So I need to have a walk of faith or a journey of faith together with God, together with his word, together with his spirit. That's when faith will work and faith will work well in my life. But if I only take it as ha, three steps, five steps, just believe, receive and keep moving on. That's not how faith is meant to work. So we should not treat faith like a formula. It's not a formula. Yes, there is a law, there is a principle, but that is not independent of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we look at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 2, we see a, a passage there. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So uh, who is Jesus? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean? It means Jesus is the one who is the beginning, who is the end of our faith. So author, when you take that word author and you study it further, it means um, somebody who is... It also means somebody who's the leader, who's the captain, right? Who um, is the author of our faith. Who is that? The Lord Jesus. Meaning our faith comes from him. So if it's not coming from Jesus, it won't work. You can't just take the principle and the law and try to make it work. Who is the author of faith? The Lord Jesus Christ. So faith is activated and faith works well when we are in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Or in other words, he is the source. No, we say source, right? The place from where something comes to us. Like generally we look at uh, water springs. And uh, water comes from the spring to supply a community of people. So what is the source? The spring. Or we look to a river and we say, oh, for this state, this river is the source. What if the river dries up? There's no water. How will people live? How will people do their day-to-day -day activities, their businesses? They can't do anything if the source dries up. So we have to understand our source is the Lord Jesus. So the Lord Jesus is the primary source of our faith. How can I have faith if I don't have the source? I need the source. So I need to be connected to God. I need to be connected to his word. I need to be connected to his presence. Then faith will operate. Right? It will operate successfully in my life. So God or Jesus is the source of our faith. And one more scripture that we can look at, uh, when Jesus said, uh, he said to the people, have faith in God. Okay, uh, We will talk about this passage later on. Uh, this is in Mark chapter 11, a time when Jesus looks at a fig tree. He goes to the fig tree and he wants to get fruit from the fig tree. But there is no fruit on the fig tree. What does Jesus do? He rebukes it. He rebukes, he curses the fig tree. And what happens the very next day when Jesus and his disciples are going from there? They see the fig tree and they are shocked. They say, oh, just yesterday, Jesus cursed the fig tree and today it has dried up. Like 24 hours. Amazing. So then Jesus looks at them and he says, why are you amazed? Don't you know? Don't you have faith in what I say? I said, you know, this fig tree is cursed. In 24 hours, the results are seen. And at that point, Jesus makes the statement and says, have faith in God. Okay. God can do what he says. God will do what he says. 
you should have faith in God. And he's encouraging faith in God. So this statement, have faith in God, there is, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, a very well studied uh, statement. And if you look at a certain translation, this is um, in the modern King James Version, it says, have faith of God. Okay, so the way they have translated it is, have faith of God. In the other translations we generally see, have faith in God. But the modern King James Version says, have faith of God. Because the, that's also the meaning that comes through. So what are, what are we trying to say? Faith is of God. Faith is, it, it comes from God as the beginning and the source. So for us to think that we can only have faith and operate in faith and we don't need a relationship with God is a false thought. Okay? We need Jesus in our lives. We need to be connected to Jesus in our lives. That is when faith will work. All right. Now, faith is based on relationship. That's, again, the same thing that I'm saying. Faith is based on relationship. We must not look at the Bible as a set of, uh, you know, formulas. You read all the formula, how to, how to do ministry, how to do business, how to do family. I'll have a good life. I'll just follow whatever the Bible says. I'll have a good life. The principles may work to some extent, but... What does God want? Why did Jesus die? So that he can have a relationship with God. Isn't it? So when God created Adam and Eve, what did he want? What's the first thing that he wanted from them? Fellowship. He would come back, isn't it? To meet with them, to spend time with Adam and Eve. Because that is what God wants. He wants to be with us. And even we want to be with him. That is the deepest desire that we carry as human beings created in the image of God to have that relationship. When we don't have that relationship, something is missing, right? We start to look in all the wrong places. But when we have a relationship with God, when we are born again, we reestablish that connect with God. And when we study the life of Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham believed God. Isn't it? What a great testimony. A man who believed God. He's known as the father uh, of, of faith. Okay. So Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. James chapter 2 and verse 23. Now in the end of that verse, notice it says, and he was called the friend of God. Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. But what does it say after that? Abraham was called a friend of God. So you see that God is all about relationship. In the case of Abraham, God did not just look at him as, ha, here is a person who is going to um, show the world how faith works. That was not how God looked at Abraham. God looked at Abraham as my friend. Right? Friendship is deep. We spend time with our friends. We share our heart with our friends. We help our friends. They help us. So much goes on in friendship and companionship. Can you imagine God is saying, Abraham, yes, you had faith in your life. You made a faith journey. That's wonderful. But at the end of the day, Abraham, a friend of God. So God is happy about his relationship which he has with Abraham. So that is another thing we must remember. God wants his principles to work in my life. But what does he really want? He wants a friendship with me. He wants a relationship with me. right? And a deep relationship is, how does it go? You kind of get to know that person and God gets to know me. So we are building this relationship, this friendship and companionship together. And that is how faith 
works and it works best uh, and we must remember that god is looking for a relationship uh, and not just to prove his word next faith is of the heart and i already dwelt on that thought earlier on uh, faith is of the heart or faith comes from our heart look at this verse in romans chapter 10 and verse 10 it says for with this with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so what happens how do we become born again romans chapter 10 verse 10 with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation two things isn't it it's at least the scripture is stating two things what are those two things if there's a person who believes in jesus and then he confesses he says okay uh, jesus i believe you are the son of god you died for me on the cross um, uh, you paid the price for my sin i accept you into my life forgive me of my sins cleanse me make me a child of god what's happening he believes something what is what does he believe that jesus is the christ jesus is the redeemer then what does he do he makes a confession he acts on his belief or on his faith and then the person is saved so two things believe in your heart confess with your mouth the lord jesus then you will be saved so what do we see here believing happens in the heart okay so the heart is a very important place that god has given us uh, and we can believe in the heart okay now let me tell you if we were to believe in the mind sometimes in our minds it's uh, it's not easy to believe so now we are not trying to say that uh, you know logical thinking is not godly one should not use the brain or one should not use the mind of course not god has given us the mind god has given us the brain we must be intelligent we must be wise we must exercise our mental faculties all that is very good but belief doesn't happen in the mind for example there's a promise of god let's take abraham itself again there is a promise of god that you are going to uh, have a, a son and through him you will have descendants now we know that the situation is quite um, impossible because abraham is already old his wife is already old past the age of childbearing the bible says so what would the mind say at this point logical thinking this is not practical okay uh, how can this happen uh, there are no medicines there are no doctors so logical thinking sometimes is very limited to what we can see or um, it is limited to the natural information but the heart can believe even when the mind cannot accept you know what i mean the mind yeah i have a lot of questions i have a lot of doubts how can it be I have questions in the mind but believing can happen in my heart where i say i don't have all the answers but i believe isn't it think about that so in the mind belief doesn't happen but the bible says which is the place where believing happens in the heart so even when my mind does not have all the answers to say that you know um, god will come through for me think about uh, joshua joshua is leading all the people okay they are going into uh, they are slowly conquering possessing pieces of the land that god gave uh, the children of israel and god tells him joshua i want you to go around you know jericho seven times uh, seven days and on the seventh day seven times think about joshua logical thinking you would have said god what god what are, do you know architecture how will the building fall if i just walk around the wall logical thinking it's not wrong what he's saying is logical there are questions in his mind how can this happen just by walking around just by praising god how can this happen but 
Joshua did it. He told the people to do it. Why? Because in the heart he believed. He knew. God is saying, God knows how to do this. I just have to obey him. Okay, let's go. Let's do seven circles. Right? On seven days. And seven circles on the seventh day. What happened? The walls of Jericho, the mighty walls of Jericho came crashing down. Same thing. Moses, lift up your rod. Go in front of the Red Sea. It will open. Logical thinking. God, do you know, have you asked the meteorod, material, whatever, how do you pronounce it? The department, right? Uh, who predict weather. God, do you even know what the weather is going to look like tomorrow? Moses didn't ask any questions. He may have had doubts, but he believed in his heart. He said, God is saying it. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the seas, the mountains. He can do it. Okay. Lift up my rod. The Red Sea parted. And they went past it. So, you see, believing is in the heart. Even when the mind has questions, the heart can be at peace. Where we are trusting in God. We are resting in God. We are believing in God. So, believe is of the heart. With a heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So, remember that. We can maintain a heart of faith even at times when there's a lot of confusion around us, a lot of struggles around us. We can carry faith in our hearts. Okay. Um, in um, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, beautiful verse, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. How do we walk? We walk by faith and we do not walk by sight so if we only walk if we only make decisions in our lives based on our five senses we won't be able to journey with god isn't it we won't be able to experience the miracles of god the supernatural work of god so how should we walk how should we journey walk by faith not just by sight. Not just with our limited thinking. God is beyond that. God knows how to go beyond that. So if there is a promise of God or a truth of God which he has ministered to us, we need to hold on to it. Hold on to the faith in our hearts and we will see that God actually works through it. So faith is of the heart and um, uh, you know, in the mind we may still be struggling with several thoughts. Let's move on. Uh, the next point here says that we must live by faith. So everything that we do, we must do it by faith. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, it says, The just shall live by faith. So what does it mean day to day? Faith is not just in the church. Faith is not just in the ministry. Faith all the time. The just shall live by faith. Live by faith means when I wake up, I need to have faith. When I you know, uh, go about my day, I need to have faith. When I am interacting with people, I need to have faith. So faith in my heart in God constantly for everything even when i'm maybe eating my food my meals i pray over it i say god you bless this meal thank you for this meal i sanctify it in the name of jesus this is a blessing to my body i bless the people who have made this what am i doing i'm exercising my faith in everything okay not just okay faith live by faith in bible college and then you know you can be on by yourself it's not like that what does the scripture say romans 1 17 everything the just shall live by faith. Day-to-day -day choices. Day-to-day -day, uh, decisions. Where is my faith? What do I believe about God? You know, I, I read, uh, when you spend time, quiet time every day, you read the Bible, you understand you know, what God is speaking to your heart. On the basis of that, start to make choices. Start to make decisions. Day-to-day, -day, put your trust in God. So to live every day by faith is also something that we can 
practice uh, and grow in. And the Bible, in fact, says in Romans chapter 14, verses 22 to 23, it says um, that for whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Okay? Uh, that's a very strong statement. So if I'm doing something, maybe I'm doing it for God only. Let's, let's take it that way. But I don't have faith that God is going to use that ministry or, uh, you know, uh, God is going to bless that uh, decision. What, what's happening? There's a lot of unbelief. And I'm still functioning in unbelief, right? Maybe initially God is very gracious. He helps us. He, he um, forgives us, all that. But when we continue in unbelief, that is not acceptable by God. So the scripture, Paul tells, if anything which is not of faith is sin, Okay, so faith. Now you all are studying here in Bible college. Do it by faith. I know God is going to bless me. My life is going to be a blessing to many people. Right? Uh, uh, I'm going to be a blessing to my nation. So what is all this? Faith. It's coming from your heart. You're doing it with the right reason. As per the way God is leading you and guiding you. And where there is faith, right? God is pleased. Um, the things of God take place. And God is looking for faith in every heart. So we should never do it uh, with a sense of um, unbelief. I don't know something, right? So wh what's all that? We actually don't believe. But still we're doing the right thing. But what does Romans 14 say? Anything which is not of faith is sin. It's a very strong statement. So God is looking for faith in our everyday life. And we must uh, ask the Lord, please help me, God. All that I do, help me to have faith in my heart and, and do it with faith. Okay? Um, and faith is conceived and nurtured. Okay? I would like to look at this as, uh, I've heard a sermon where uh, you know, they, they shared something like, the heart is the garden. Okay, the heart is the garden. Uh, and there are scriptures that also remind us that our heart is like the womb, right? Where this, when the seed comes, that's when uh, uh, you, you see the birthing of, uh, of, of, of a, a child. So in the same way, the heart is a garden. The heart is the womb. So what happens? The word of God, when you put the word of God in the heart, what, what begins to happen? We've seen, right, the, the passage where Jesus talks about the seed and the sower. So the seed is the word of God. The sower takes the seed, he goes and scatters seed. Then, depending on the nature of the soil, you see a produce. In some places, you have a good um, crop. In some places, there's a lot of hindrance, all right? But the place where there is good soil, you can see that the seeds are thriving. Our heart is somewhat like that. When our heart is a believing heart, now we're all listening to the word of God, what happens? It starts to take root. There's a plant, right? It begins to grow. And you can start to see the leaves, and slowly you will start to see the fruit. What is the fruit? The fruit is transformation. I'm changing. I'm changing the way I, I think of things. I'm changing the decisions that I'm making. You know, I'm changing the way I'm behaving with people. I'm changing the, the way I'm doing ministry. I'm changing. What's happening? The word has gone inside. It's been sown into my heart and now it's producing. Isn't it? So that is how uh, the word really works in our hearts. Now, we can also look at this, uh, this as the heart being the place where we conceive faith. Even faith arises in our heart. So Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, it says, Then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I want faith. Okay, In my life, I want faith. To, uh, to be a righteous person. 
Where shall I get the faith? What did we hear earlier? Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. So I'll go to Jesus and I'll say, Jesus, give me faith. I want faith. I want to live with integrity, righteousness, honesty. Give me faith. Right? But scriptures also say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So for me to get faith, I need the word. Till I listen to the word, I can't get faith. Did you understand? That is another reason why, like, you know, we are all here in Bible college and we are spending at least three hours every day listening to what? The word of God. Understanding what? The word of God. What's happening? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you listen, and when I say listen, it's not just mental, isn't it? We talked about it. It has to go down. It's going from the head to the heart. Okay, I, I like that analogy. It's kind of top to bottom. It's seeping in, sinking in. So when it's going into your heart, you conceive faith in your heart. So that is how we get faith. I want faith to be a righteous person. Get into the word of God. See what the word of God says about living righteously. Okay, I want faith to be healed. Get into the word of God. See all the scriptures, all the passages where it talks about healing. Okay, I want confidence in my life. Get into the word of God. Go to all the verses where it talks about confidence. Uh, I want to believe God for the impossible. Okay, go to all the miracles in scripture. Read it. Study it. Why are you doing this? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So, when I am reading, when I am meditating on scripture, when I am believing scripture, what's happening? I am not able to see it, but it's like, you can imagine, some plants are growing. Your heart is like a garden. Okay, some plants are growing. Don't go and tell everyone, ma'am said, plants are growing in the heart. That's not what I mean. I'm just helping you understand that faith will start to rise. And you will see the fruit, or you will see the result. What is the result? Life transformation, choices, decisions, lifestyle, right? Uh, the, we begin to walk in the power of God, the authority of God. But how is all this happening? Not because, you know, today, if you look at the world, you have so many uh, classes and sessions. People say that uh, uh, if you believe that you are great, you will become great. The universe wants to help you. Have you heard? You have all these teachings out there in the world. But is that how we experience transformation? Is that how we conquer over life's challenges? No. The Bible says we need faith. Faith will come from the word. So get into the word. Listen to the word. Believe the word. Declare the word. Live the word. So as we are doing that, faith is bubbling up. Faith is becoming stronger in my heart. And then I can walk on the basis of faith. Okay, so this is how we develop faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, for some of us, you know, it might be uh, very weird to take so much time in reading the Bible or reading, you know, uh, good books that explain God's word. But you see, it has to become a lifestyle. Reason? Unless we read the word, we will not have faith. If you're lacking faith, what to do? Get into the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? So with this, I will stop. Um, okay. So Nidel is asking, which version of the Bible do you recommend? Um, any, any version which, uh, uh, you know, it's easier for you to understand Nidel and communicate. Um, the, the one that we are referencing here, mostly NKJV. So, yeah, uh, that's what I would like to say. And he's also asking, which version do you advise for qualitative Bible studies? So you can actually go through various versions. That's the best way to learn. So you can look at the same passage in multiple versions. And uh, thankfully, uh, now we have technology, so you can go to some of the sites where immediately you can translate it, right? It gives you the option. 
You can pick the version and the same scripture parallelly. You can see it in different versions. So that will be helpful, uh, Nidel, as you study God's word. OK, uh, Sanjay is uh, suggesting a particular uh, uh, website there. You can please use that. All right, so let's close with a word of prayer, everyone. Uh, and if you have questions, please come back with the questions in the next class. We'll try to answer them and continue from there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity that uh, we could meditate in your word and uh, for the empowering of your spirit, Lord. Father, we pray that uh, you will give us understanding of uh, faith so that we can uh, develop faith, Lord, in our hearts and live uh, by faith. Lord, this is what you're looking for. The just shall live by faith. And faith pleases God. So, Father, I pray that all of us, Lord, let all of us be people who live our lives in faith, Lord, and glorify your name. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And uh, thank you, everyone. Bye for now. Uh, you can go for your break.